What are you? <laughs> Hunter x Hunter episode 50. 50th episode spectacular. Right? <laughs> no, Gone. He just blew it. Oh, thank God. He could have just been like, hey, Ahsoka. That would have been so Gone. We arm wrestled her. Nice save. Wow, she has a pure heart? <laughs> she just let that loss go. Or just in firm denial. Would you vacuum up her brain too? That's nice of them. It gets more impressive the more we see about the Phantom Troop. <laughs> They're just hanging out now. We're just homies. <laughs> you know, there's actually no peril. Because real recognizes real. This is how Gon became the leader of the Phantom Troop. <laughs> it's just the way the story's going. Kurapika, you know, gang member, gang leader. Leorio, con man master. Gon, just leader of the Phantom Troop, because why not? Kalua head of his assassin family. And then they have like, uh, you know, some kind of oligarchy on the world. That's the true ending. Or it would be, if they weren't so easily distracted. If they didn't have so much life to live and so much world to explore. Because then it's so cool. And uh, like, honestly, this is one of my favorite things I'm getting out of the show these days. Then it's so cool. The world is so cool. Life is so cool. Why do any one thing exclusively. Why? There, there's a bigger thing that contains all other things. All things are a subset of the great thing, which is life. Can you organically tap into that and ride its flow? Ally X and X Sword. Tell me the ally is Ahsoka. Oh. That's more like it. Right, I forgot that thing that it was not her dominant hand. That was key. Oh no, he's not even sweating. Good thing there's no money at stake. What are you? <laughs> it's like a combination of Jinx and Tangela from Pokemon. Oh. Going totally forgetting this whole situation and his only focus, winning arm wrestling. Going about to make another vow for revenge. Wow, the, the denial, plausible deniability is amazing. It's so lucky. Oh yeah, uh, Phantom Troop, right, right. Not just buddy hangout. Oh, I might go that way. <laughs> Surely they also will admire Gon's potential, right? Like he's he's a baby. Just like you. Who can really live that South Park episode fighting around the world? They lost a friend. <laughs> But he also wouldn't be late. Aww. My impression was so totally wrong. One of the first times we see them in this arc is they're kind of having a little spat as they walk along the road. I took that to mean they were not unified as a group, but it's the opposite. They're so unified, they're having little like sibling spats. If it were not for the Kurapika connection, I don't really see any beef here. I would never have seen the chain thing coming from Kripik, honestly, so. Oh, damn. Wow. That's how Gon became the spiritual leader of the Phantom Troop. Oh, did he hit a nerve? Don't worry, there's no danger here. Well, maybe there's a lot of danger there. Oh yeah, he's a torture guy. Torture dude. Okay, there is some incohesion. It's a big group. Complicated dynamics. It's neither heads nor tails. <laughs> I reject your binary outcomes. She looks so much like Annie, meaning there are two Attack on Titan characters in here. Oh, 
It's amazing that they they actually like smelled Kurapika on them. Maybe I'm just being clouded by the fact that I enjoy the, the Phantom Troops so much. I like them despite myself. But I feel like this situation notwithstanding, or if Golden Klua chill here long enough, Golden Klua might be the type that they end up loving because there's actually a lot of similarity here. I mean, Gon is like little Uvogin, a better heart or like less corrupted heart so far. But am I alone in thinking you can feel or you can imagine a potential path for Gon where he just becomes Uvogin if it's not for like friends and meeting people and developing empathy, etc. Like if his guiding force was only the Nen being on the cutting edge of one's ability, especially being such a sponge, like Gon is one bad influence away from Uvogin. Maybe. And you could also make an argument going back to what the antique dealer said that his strength lies in the fact that he's not, he doesn't really make a choice, but like he kind of will at some point, right? He will have to. He can play with all things, light and darkness, and still have sort of a defended core. But like, it also begs the question, what is that core? There is clearly some empathy in there, some camaraderie in there, some other values, some higher values. But there's also a great na naivety, I hate that word, and a hunger for power and winning, etc. I know the feeling of meeting someone antagonistic, but loving them anyway and feeling like they're one of you, if you see in them the potential of something really excellent and, and something important to you that you love, and simultaneously the threat is sort of nullified by their lack of development. So you, you feel you have the room to develop them into that something great. What's her quirk? Oh, she can read memories. Oh, you figured it out? How did you figure that out? Oh. Shut up. <laughs> they have to bury the, the truth in other truth. Tell them everything except for Kurapika. <laughs> wow. The trial of Gonin Kalua. Yeah, of course. It's inevitable. <laughs> Gon just can't speak dishonestly. We just lost ours. That's <laughs> so funny, man. It's so great. He's thrilled. I mean, he probably sees Uvogin. Uvogin? There it is. The enhancer connection. But he was never really alone. Uvogin's sweet side. A lot of them are dead. Who are we rooting for? It gets confusing. One of them is still alive, but you can cross him off because of how easily he folds. Hey, second chance at a date or a sleepover. It's odd thinking about why I don't want to talk about this necessarily, but it's so good arousal. There's like two different kinds. Like this feels fundamentally different. This feels just like normal sexual attraction. His arousal for death. Is different. At one point earlier in the series, I was wondering if Ahsoka wasn't a devil type figure, but in a more interesting way than just like, he's bad. This goes somewhat into my way overcomplicated theory of the world and the universe or whatever. But if you think about goodness in life, or, you know, you try to pin some kind of objective-ish structure to the meaning of life and a sort of direction or will for the universe, you might imagine it's something like growth, expansion, survival, creation, synthesis, innovation, increasing the capabilities and complexity of material realities so that the potential of what it can do rises in tandem. And maybe there's something divine or godlike about that pursuit that does seem to me to have some kind of will contained within some kind of value structure. So then what would be the opposite? It would be like destroying that destruction for destruction's sake. And indeed, 
Ahsoka takes a lot of pleasure in destroying things or killing people at their highest level of growth and potential. We put the maximum amount of work into this thing. We've worked so hard. We've defied the odds. We've battled adversity. We've created something beautiful that is a testament to the universe or God or whatever. And I'm just going to destroy it for no reason. And I'm going to get a thrill out of that. It's like a deep uh, like spite or something. He gets pleasure from the power of being a counterforce to the good in a very, very direct way to my philosophy that I think is really interesting. <laughs> I never know. Oh, Galua does know. Interesting. Face to face with your own powerlessness. Wow, this is really throwing it back at a relevant time. Oh, I hope this isn't. Well, this is some dangerous foreshadowing here for Galua. I don't doubt he's capable of self-sacrifice, but I don't want him to self-sacrifice. Actually, I want to kill my brother. No, you don't need to prove it right now, though. No, this is not it, though. There's nothing at stake right now. Oh, I know this feeling so well, though. Haunted by feelings of powerlessness. The answer isn't to, like, fight the hardest thing for no reason. And that's not failure. Turning around is not failure, it's success. You don't like go out and die just to prove you can die, you know, or to prove that you have the courage to die. That's foolish. You save it for when you need it. You nurture the thought and you try to envision things as clearly as you can. And yeah, it's a little bit unsettling because if, if you've never done it, you don't know if you can do it. But like dying on a hill just to know that you can die on a hill, that's not it. Something on your mind, Kalua? <laughs> What's Leorio doing? <laughs> something wrong, Kalua? Something on your mind? I don't remember the name, but... <laughs> Gon's just content to sit here with his, with his auctioneer fantasies, just in the moment. It's time for some creative nen use. He's possessed a little bit. Don't say that out loud. Yeah, go on. Smack some sense into him. No, 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 I thought we were okay. Yeah, we gotta finally go on slapping some sense into Kalua instead of the other way around. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm going. I do it. That's infuriating logic, though. Maybe this helps go and understand his own value. This escape plan is going great. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> I'm with Nobunaga on this one. Hard not to love them and respect them. Even as a villainous phantom troop member. I mean, I think the real danger is if he, like, forces them into the group. Sidestepping. <laughs> Going in a different world. What happened to this energy, Kalua? There it is. Totally moved on. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was Gon's hold up? We learned this in the Hunter exam. Hunter exam continuously paying dividends forever. I mean, he makes his own doors now, so... Don't give away your position. Maybe this is a decoy, maybe they're throwing their voices. Move! And Raynar. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> they're all gone. You gotta give it to them, but it's just the willfulness. Does not want to wait. <laughs> Gon so clearly understands the roles. That's so funny. Can we take a break in this arc to do a training montage? We can learn how to do bonds or whatever. Pacts? Still curious how he figured that out. 
Oh. Why are we fighting them again? Is it really just for the money? <laughs> well, I guess we're after Kurpika. Wow. How to make being locked in a room fun. The Hunter x Hunter story. Gong. Killua. Hunter Cyclopedia. You got giant ass guns. Oh yeah, we saw that. He's got the, the Barrett arms. It's really convincing that people just gotta bend to Gon's will. The willful do win if it's real and consistent. People who don't back down, you can feel it. <laughs> Even when you're right, you're just wrong and that's it. If you have any ideations of like moving the person or moving the situation that requires the use of that person or that person's consent, you're, you're just wrong. <laughs> if the person's willful enough, there's nothing you can do. That's kind of Gon. There are a bunch of interesting things for me this episode. One is just how naturally and at home Kalua <laughs> and Gon feel in the Phantom Troop. They have that common thing that I've been, you know, trying to hit at where, you you know, the Phantom Troop members, a lot of them are terrible. They're cold-blooded killers, but they are tapped into something that I think is higher than what a lot of people are used to pursuing. You know, the money, the fame, the glory. They're just on that edge of life, uh, of experience, of raw ability and potential, just like Gon. So much so that it even feels obvious that they wouldn't kill them. You'd think, well, they're these like bloodthirsty monsters and Gon and Clue are witnesses to an extent, but like they're too similar. They're too much in that category of real recognizes real to think that they would like waste Gon and Kalua, you know, that they would be indifferent enough to them to murder them, see them as just, you know, disposable pawns, like all the mafia people they gunned down. There are more subjects of like interest and curiosity and potential as, you know, Nobunaga directly alluded to. Another interesting thing for me in this episode is Kalua is obviously still having hangups about that brother interaction. I spoke about that a little bit already, but like I so, so understand that feeling of wanting to lash out and do the thing that proves to yourself that you're not your biggest fear. Apply to everything even things that contain the challenge but not the importance. Being a teenager, for example, and feeling not really heard or feeling like one's opinion is not valued. Feeling like you see things other people don't see. Really loving ideas and logical reasoning, etc. But then seeing the need to apply that to every conversation against everyone, no matter what the topic or stakes, to the point where, you know, your presence is sort of grating and you've lost the thread somewhere. The strength is great, you know, the recognition of one's weaknesses is great. It's hard, but it's so good to look at. It goes really well though, when it's applied to the right things, you know, things that actually are important to you or useful to you, that you'd get some benefit out of, other people would benefit from. Not just, you know, wielding that chip on your shoulder as a weapon against everyone and everything to tremendous detriment, not only to other people, but especially to yourself. Clue is right in assessing that he's not as strong as he wants to be. You know, he can't take Nobunaga head on. He would probably frame it as he's never risked his life for Gon. I think we could argue differently given the, the show so far. He does risk his life for Gon. He's never had to do a like, direct life or death combat situation for Gon. And that nags on him because, you know, how do you know? Is my brother right? Maybe I couldn't. Maybe I'd be paralyzed by fear. He definitely has that potential in him. Like everyone does. Even the best of people, not every moment is guaranteed. You know, you're not going to act your best in every given situation. You will miss things. You will drop opportunities, especially opportunities that you're not particularly focused on. In fact, I think that's actually the purpose of that, that nag fear, that nagging anxiety, that chip on the shoulder, it's like to keep making you look at it so that it's no longer a blind spot. But then once it's no longer a blind spot and you've really delved into it deeply and you've thought about it and okay, how do I want to show up in this situation? I'm very clear on the fact that I don't want to be caught off guard by this situation. Then you kind of have to like leave it on faith a little bit and wait for the situation to arise and then do it. I'm guessing that a lot of viewers are like me and thinking that there's no real doubt that at some point or eventually Kalua will be there for Gon. He obviously wants to be there for Gon. Maybe you'll get frozen in a moment. It's possible, right? But I don't know, I have faith in him that he'll be able to do it and it'll get there. You don't want to see him die because of that chip on his shoulder. That does no one any good. And you would hope that Gon, seeing that mirrored, would take some insight from that, but I mean, he's gone. Gon only takes the insight that he wants to take in. 